You won't believe the DIY we are doing today. We are gonna take this thrift store cutting board and return it to its previous glory. I was amazed at how these cutting boards go for so much online. So I asked some friends for help on how to fix this up and got lots of recommendations. I'll share my best with you. I'm Autumn with the Flipper's Guide and we do totally doable DIYs here. I want you to have a home that you love so stick with me and I will teach you one flip at a time. When I posted online about getting this cutting board, I had so many recommendations on what to use. Everything said lemons, vinegar, and salt. These three items are amazing at disinfecting cutting boards. So we're going to put all these together and clean it up and make it so much better. Don't worry, I will be getting rid of all of those cutting board marks also, but before we do that, we have to get it clean. I first applied water and vinegar with a scrub brush. This water was hot and boiling so that it would help just continue to kill any bacteria. I used salt and made sure that it was a textured salt and used the actual raw fresh lemon because I was told that this disinfects even better than any of the concentrate. I made sure it got into all of the areas because wood is very porous and got every corner and every edge. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to be here. We have so much fun with our DIYs and there's so many fun things coming soon. I continued making sure that the lemon, the vinegar, and the water and salt got into the wood and washed it all off with soap and water. Now it was time to take care of these cutting board marks. Someone donated this piece, gave it to Goodwill because they had given up on it. You need to know that is not what you should do. Don't give up on these pieces. I will show you exactly how to fix them. What I'm gonna do is use the same technique I would if I was refinishing a dresser that had scratches all over it. I'm gonna start with a low grit and move to a high grit slowly. There are so many scratches in this piece, so it is going to need a long time of sanding. If you do have a planer, one thing you may do is run your cutting board through the planer, but I do not have one, so we're just gonna continue sanding. Can you already see the difference? I am getting so excited. You can tell that the cutting marks are already disappearing, so we're gonna switch to the medium grit. This is close to a 120 grit, with surf prep sandpaper, they call it um, fine, super fine. Um, so it's a little bit different, but they have these sanding pads that really protect the wood, and I absolutely love that. I think the other side is even worse than the first side. So back to the low grit. This is an 80 grit sandpaper, and we are using this to get rid of all of those cut marks. It's gonna take a while, but that's okay. I'll speed it up for you. And again, switching to that medium grit. This is the foam pad, and it is looking so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. And finally, I switched to the very fine pad. So this is like a 220 or higher grit, and it will really just smooth out the rest of the piece. Four. <laughs> I think one of the most satisfying things about sanding is having that before and after, being able to see how rough it was before and then just completely get it sanded to a smooth buttery finish these grits and going in that order will work it's a lot of work but totally worth it okay let's go 
So here's the secret to getting a smooth cutting board. You want to wet your piece down again after you've sanded it in order to raise that grain. That way, whenever you do get it wet again, it will be smooth. We will be sanding it down one more time and getting it ready for prep. Now's the time where we get to sand it down and I'm just hand sanding. I'm using a very fine grit and I'm following it up with an even finer grit. I'm gonna follow it up with a thousand grit sandpaper. This will give the very, very buttery smooth feel on your piece. All right, up next is one of my favorite parts. I love this. I am adding the walrus oil. So this is for cutting boards and butcher blocks. It is amazing stuff. Look at that. It is making the transformation so much easier. This is food grade safe and it will protect and seal these cutting boards. One tip I was given is to make sure and completely soak it. Not just rub it on, but let it soak for 12 to 24 hours. So while I let it soak, my husband and I decided to go for a walk and we had a scary moment. Let me show you. And it was walking there. Huh. Look, it's just chilling. That's so weird. See you later, lobster of the land. <laughs> it's so creepy. I feel like I don't want to walk anymore in the dark. Yeah, we'll just crunch it. <laughs> All right, y'all. I survived my walk, and this beauty is looking so good. It soaked up the walrus oil beautifully, and now it's time to wipe it back. So let's look at what it looks like now. Before I show you, I want you to see my husband's reaction. I got it. Yeah. Holy crap. Sorry. <laughs> he found the same goodwill. There's the before. It had such a long way to go. Someone had given up on it. And I hope you never do now that you know how to refinish a cutting board. And here is the after. I knew I was going to be able to give this board some new life, but I did not realize we were going to be able to bring it back to its old original glory. Look how beautiful. Goodbye, old board. Hello, beautiful. Do you have questions? What things did I not answer? Please be sure and add them in the comments. All products will be linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for being here with the Flipper's Guide. You've got this.